Hey guys, Anthony Morganti here. Today we're going to talk about the why and how of making multiple versions of an image in Lightroom. Let's talk about the why first. I have this image, I processed it in color. I'm satisfied with it. But a little part of me is wondering, I wonder what it would look like in black and white. Or, you know, there's a really old building here. I wonder what it would look like sepia toned. Or, you know, that blue is really saturated. Wonder, I wonder what it would look like with less saturated blue. Well, I could come in and let's say, go to the basic tab and convert it to black and white and then maybe put the temp slider up, go to the black and white mix, and I could start messing around here with sliders and get it, you know, and then, you know, I don't know. As I'm looking at it, you know what? I really liked it better in color. So then I have to undo everything. So I have to like reset my black and white mix. I have to remember what I did and reset the sliders the way they were before I converted it to black and white. Now, I only did three different kind of groups of adjustments there. If I did a lot more, I may have forgot what I did and what order I did them, and then I going back and undo them is just a chore. Well, that's where these alternate versions really work out well in Lightroom. And there's two different ways to create like alternate versions in Lightroom. The first way I used to use all the time, but I found that more recently I've been using the second way more often. Each has advantages and disadvantages. And let's talk about them both. First, we'll start out with the first one, virtual copies. Virtual copies are really cool. I could create a virtual copy of this image, and then down in the film strip, there'll be another version of that image. But on my hard drive, there isn't another file there, so you're not taking up any additional hard drive space. All the edits are kept in the catalog, so I could have edits for the original image and different edits for the virtual image, and I'm not taking up any more space on my computer. Now, to create a virtual copy, you could just right-click on the image and you could go down to Create Virtual Copy, or you could go up to Photo and down to Create Virtual Copy, but I prefer the keyboard shortcut. On a Mac, it's Command Apostrophe. On a PC, it's Control Apostrophe. And when you do that, you'll see down in the film strip, now I have two versions of the image. You could tell this one is a virtual copy because the corner is folded up. Now, when you create a virtual copy, it's gonna bring all the edits you did on the original image with it. So I'm right at that same point. Now on the virtual copy, I could convert this to black and white and I could do as many as adjustments as I want to my heart's content. And we can go to calibration, bring the situation of that down. So I could do a lot of different adjustments. So now I have a black and white version and I have a color version and I still have my original color version intact. Now, another nice thing about virtual copies, if I want to bring these over into Photoshop, I could bring either of them or both of them into Photoshop. It, Photoshop sees them as individual files. So to prove that, I'll click on one and I'll hold the command key down and click on the other one so they're both selected. I'll right click and I'm gonna go up to edit in and then we'll go to edit in Adobe Photoshop 2020. And Lightroom, depending on how you have your Lightroom set up, it's going to create uh, either a TIFF file for each of them or a PSD file for each of them. And that is in preferences of Lightroom. You actually determine how you want to use Photoshop as a plugin. And then when you do that, it will send the appropriate either TIFF or PSD. And it takes a second because it has to create the file. And you can see I have two tabs of images. I have the color image there and the black and white image there. So it is nice in that regard. I'm not going to save these. But the thing about virtual copies is, let's say you had a large photo shoot and you have like, you know, 700 images in a folder or in a collection, and they're all down here in the film strip and you start creating virtual copies for a number of different images, it gets confusing and gets cluttered. So you have a ton of different images down here in the film strip. That's where the second method might be preferable. That is snapshots. Well, let me undo this. I'm just going to get rid of this virtual copy. I'm just going to remove it from the collection. So we have the original image. 
Snapshots allow you to go down rabbit holes. So you could create a snapshot at any point in your processing and it will remember where you were. And then you could just keep editing and do other things, create another snapshot maybe, keep editing, keep doing things, create another snapshot. And then you could jump back to those points in your editing by just clicking on the appropriate snapshot. For example, I have this image. It's a color processed image. I'm done with it as far as color is concerned. I'll go over on the left panel where it says snapshot, click the little plus sign. It will default to the date and time. I'm just going to change this to color. That's my color version. All right. I'm going to click, click on create. So I have that snapshot there. Now I just want to keep processing. So again, let's just stay with the black and white theme. So I'm going to convert it to black and white. I'll go very quickly. All right. So we could kind of do stuff here. All right and calibration okay so there's my black and white version now i'll go over to the snapshots tab click on the little plus sign again and i'm going to call this b and w for black and white and we'll click create now i have two snapshots my color one and my black and white one so it's less cluttered down in the film strip and that's another method you could use for creating a multiple version of your image now you might be wondering well what about if you want to edit both versions or you want to bring it over into Photoshop and you don't know which version you're actually going to end up using when you're in Photoshop, you could still do this. What you need to do is right click on the image, go down to edit in. Instead of going to the top, edit in Adobe Photoshop 2021 like I did before, go down here to open a smart object in Photoshop. When you do that, it's going to take this image and open it up as a smart object. So it's actually taking the raw file, the actual raw file, and opening it up into Photoshop as a smart object. See, it's reading the raw format. Just give it a second. All right. Now we have this in here, and it brought, you know, the black and white snapshotted version. Let's just say that I want to change that to the color version. Well, because it's a smart object, I could just double click on the film strip or on the um, layer. If you look at the layer, you could see it has this little like thing in the corner. That means it's a smart object or a smart layer. Just double click on that and it will open it up into Adobe Camera Raw. And right here is the uh, snapshots tab. Click on that and click on color. And there I got my color snapshot. Click OK and it will go back to Photoshop and it will now be the color version of the image. It does take a while to do it. There it is. Now, um, when you do this, just make sure that you access Adobe Camera Raw by double clicking on the layer, on the little postage stamp part of the layer. Don't go up to Filter and then down to Camera Raw Filter because then that brings up Camera Raw as a filter and you can see the Snapshots tab is not there. So you have to double click on it to access uh, the full version basically of camera raw so you could click on the snapshots tab and be able to do it i'm just not going to save that and you're back so now i have the two snapshots there's the color there's the black and white um i could create a third one if i wanted to check that sepia out i could create a fourth one if i wanted to maybe bring a little less blue saturation into the color image so i could create as many snapshots as i need and if i decide that i don't want one any longer let's say i don't want the black and white one just click on the little minus here and it's gone forever. So that's two different ways you could create multiple versions of an image in Lightroom. I hope that helps you better utilize Lightroom in your post-processing. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <music>